randomly and at separate times all through the church. Let's try it again. Good morning. 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 I want to welcome you to Leatherwood Church. Just a few announcements. Uh, the youth meeting, the youth are meeting tonight at it says six thirty in the board, and that's is it six o'clock, Justin? Yeah, six o'clock. So that should be youth meeting tonight at six p.m. Um, there's a sign up sheet for snow camp. It's on the back table. Uh, I think we're right around 140, 145 that have signed up so far. Uh, we have to have a minimum of 150, which I don't think will be a problem. Um, but there is a maximum of 200. So if you're not signed up and want to go, please get signed up together. Uh, also, there's a, a meeting for all the leaders that are going to snow camp on Monday, uh, tomorrow at the First Church of God on Rockersburg Road at 7 o'clock. We are still in need of female counselors. I don't know why it is every year, but we always have the male side is always filled with counselors and have extra counselors, and the ladies side is always in need and we're always begging. So if you are a female over the age of 21 and, and would like to go, we need you. So uh, come talk to me and we'll get you signed up together. Uh, also, down here, down front, uh, we are collecting books for Uganda, and uh, so uh, we've got several of those. Also, uh, Dan and Maria Hurlbrink on a hold of us, and they are trying to collect toys and candy canes for their orphanage in Romania. So we have a sign down here for books and a sign down here for toys. So you can bring new and gently used toys or books in for the next couple of weeks. Um, actually, I think it's, yeah, we've got two weeks left in January, so... Uh, you can bring them in and, uh, and uh, for Romania or for Uganda. Uh, the next Ministries Council meeting is Monday, January 27th at 7 p.m. Does anyone else have any other announcements? All right, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we so thank you uh, for the privilege of being able to come and be in your house today. Father God, we thank you that we can come freely to worship you to hear from you, to learn from you. And Father God, we ask you to just bless this time as we come into your presence. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let's go ahead and stand and we'll worship together.
several people that lost power and lost gas and heat and all and uh, um, we're thankful for those that, that went out and, and got back up and kept it working through the night. Yes? Any other prayer requests? Dave, I know 
goes uh, to have his back surgery on Tuesday uh, down in Pittsburgh. So remember Dave. Yes. About this next, the next Tuesday. Okay. Yes, in the back. Okay. Yes. Okay, so for John Jeffers. Yes. Okay. And yes. Take these to the Lord in prayer. Father God, it's so good to be able to come to you. Lord, we thank you for uh, all the blessings that you have given us for this past week. Lord, we thank you that uh, Luke is home safely and will be home for a week. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for uh, the cheerleaders advancing to the state uh, competition, Father God. And we ask you to be with them as they go to states. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of a new house and for a a closing date of January 20th. So we just uh, pray for, for Justin and Tracy and Justice and thank you for the blessing of a new home. Lord, we thank you for um, Janine and, and her uh, praise of just uh, family and friends uh, coming around us since she uh, broke her uh, foot this uh, past week. And Lord, we just uh, pray for continued healing in that foot. We pray for, for Dawn as he is home sick, but we thank you that all the kids are are feeling better. Lord, we also I just thank you for family visiting from North Carolina and for Tiffany and, and her new job and Lord for the blessing of all the, the workers who were able to go out and keep our heat on and keep our electric on and, 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 and uh, we just thank you for the job that they did. Lord, we also just uh, bring our, requ our request to you, Lord, and we think of Janine as she's uh, uh, getting ready to take her board exam, and Lord, we pray that uh, uh, she would pass with flying colors, and Lord, we just uh, uh, pray that you would be with her. Lord, we also think of uh, the Kent Angie Keller and the family, and, and Lord, we know that uh, it's going to be a difficult time, but Lord, we pray for, for your strength and your peace, Lord, we also, just to uh, lift up Dave, and, and, and as he's going to be having surgery on his back on Tuesday, Father God, we pray that you would be with the surgeons, and Lord, that uh, you would give them wisdom and guidance, and Lord, that you bring about healing in, in Dave's back. And Lord, we think of Buck uh, as he's going for surgery, Father God, we uh, I just pray for him as well, that he would uh, uh, just allow a quick recovery and, and help the surgery to be beneficial for all the pain that that he's experienced. Lord, we think of, of, of uh, Andy and family as they had some burst pipes. And Father God, we just pray that uh, uh, you'd give uh, uh, wisdom in fixing them. And, and Lord, uh, just uh, allow this uh, repair to, to take place quickly and, and, uh, and efficiently. Lord, we also think of Don Jeffers, uh, uh, who was having some trouble with his medication. But uh, Lord, we praise you that it seemed to have it figured out. That Father God, we just thank you for for going. And Lord, for um, this Jacob Seth, Lord, that's a that's a head of his brother. Lord, we pray for for uh, for him this morning. Lord, also for this uh, family, um, Rosemary and Jenny. Lord, we just uh, lift up their family situation. Lord, and Lord, I ask you to to just be there and and, and to knit uh, the family together as only you can. Lord, we also think of of uh, Bob who will be having cataract surgery and, and Lord we just pray that uh, you would again be with the surgeons and, and Lord that uh, give them wisdom and, and guidance and Lord also for this Michael Klinger who has uh, cancer Father God we, we just pray for him and Lord we uh, 
just just asking you to be near the family and to meet their needs at this time. And Lord, we also come to you, uh, Lord, just asking for help with snow camp and and uh, for female counselors, Lord, that you would uh, just place a. Uh, uh, place it in the hearts of those who need to be there, Father God, and Lord, also for the rest of our service, Lord, we are just uh, asking you to just uh, be real to each one of us and to show up in, in, in a mighty way, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward for the morning times and offerings, and as they come, as you know, every year we have a Leatherwood uh, Fantasy Football Blake, and uh, once again it's over, and she's not here to share in the embarrassment that the winner of the Fluid Bowl trophy this year was Buck Mills. Uh, so we'll have to get that to him somehow. Uh, and the champion of the fantasy football this year was Justin Morgan. So, Justin, you want to come and claim your trophy? Uh, thank you, <laughs>
got to see it, ain't it? Come on. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. The mighty hand, the mighty hand, and outstretched arms. His love.
Several years ago, um, it was not long after we had moved back home, there was a movie um, that was uh, coming out that I was looking forward to. Now, uh, when we lived in Robertsdale, we didn't go to the movies much, not because we didn't want to go to the movies, but just because to go to the movies required an hour commitment of a drive one way uh, to go to a movie theater. But this one, no way. This one was one that we were looking forward to, so go ahead. Man and machine. 
that should allow you to change. He says there should be a difference in you. This, 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 these facts that I've laid out should cause a change in you. Maybe even a transformation. And according to the, his first words in chapter 12, that is just what we will undergo as people who, when we get this teaching, when we allow the words that Paul has laid out to, to affect us, that our lives will be Transform. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to, to Romans chapter 12, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 8. 
And this is what it says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgments in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. You see, when, when we read these words that Paul has written down, they should cause such an effect, they should cause us to transform into something else that we were not before. There should be a change that occurs in us that makes us different from the other things around us. And when I see that word transform, I think back to my childhood days, and I think, yes, that's cool. When I was playing with that little toy, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to transform into something more powerful, into something that, that was capable of doing so much good. And Paul is saying that that is possible. But before we go into the areas of transformation, I'm just going to ask the, uh, Justin, would you open us in prayer this morning? The first transformation that's supposed to occur in our life, according to Paul, is that we become a living sacrifice. We become a living sacrifice. I was thinking back, and I guess I'm still in the Christmas mood because there's still Christmas stuff up all around me, but uh, as I was uh, uh, thinking back on, on or, or thinking ahead towards this sermon, I was kind of walking around in the church, and, and I was thinking about how uh, memories came to mind of the first Christmas that I was able to buy presents for all my family members with my own money. Anyone else remember that? No, no longer was it mom buying all my Christmas gifts. No longer was it me saying, here's a, some of my old socks. Or, you know, here's something that, that I hand to you. But I was able to, to, to buy stuff with my own money. And, and, and from the, the three jobs that I was working in. And since I was a young single, uh, just recently out of college, and I was living for free with a friend of mine, and since he was an importer from New York City and around the world, I had access to a lot of goods for a very cheap price. And so uh, I remember going through all this stuff and, and saying, oh, I think that this so-and-so would like this, and so-and-so would like this. And, and I got a good feeling putting all that effort in. And watching them open something that I that I purchased or or that I picked out for them was very satisfying. However, a few years later, I can remember a Christmas that was different from before because I now had a fiance. And so it was the first Christmas that I was deciding that I wasn't going to be at home. I was going to be somewhere else. And I decided that I was going to spend Christmas with her family. And so I remember going to, uh, to visit, and, and that the visit was fine, but before I went, I had to tell my mother. And, uh, and the look on her face when I told her was, I will never forget. And, and it was a, a disappointment because I, even though I had bought her a gift, even though I had, had, had still done everything, the, the thing that she wanted most was for me to just be there. You know, and, and after I know Alan and Faith had uh, Domino, wasn't able to come home uh, for the first time for Christmas. And, and you all experience it with when your kids go up and out of the house and they have other family and other obligation. But I realized that the greatest thing that I could give was to just be there. 
was to just be home. And, and all of those years trying to find the perfect gift did not compare to just being there. And I think of what Paul was teaching uh, about the new covenant versus the old covenant. This is what he's been getting at. In the Old Testament, whenever you messed up, you had to, to pick out the best of your flock or the, the best of your, of your harvest or, or the best thing that you had and you brought it and you harvested it or you brought the animal and you brought it before the Lord and you gave it to him as a gift. And, 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 and it had to be put to death. And, and, and it was your way of saying, I'm sorry, God, or I'm, I'm thankful for, for this, God. And, and, and it was all well and good. But with this new covenant, this new, uh, this new thing that Paul's talking about, the gift was different. Look at what Paul says in our scripture. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. You see, the gifts that you bring to God has changed under this new covenant. No longer did He want your animal. No longer did He want your crop. No longer, no longer did He want any of those things. What did He want? He wants you. He wants you to bring yourself and offer yourself as a sacrifice unto Him. And it's not like the old sacrifice that had to be put to death before He placed it on the altar. He says, I want you to place yourself on the altar to be a living sacrifice to me. What does that mean? Being a living sacrifice means you're no longer your own. It means you take your rights and the things that you want and the things that you desire and you lay them at the feet of Jesus. And you say, no longer what I want, what I desire, but Jesus, what you want and what you desire is what my life is going to be about. We give Him ownership of us as our gift to Him to do as He sees fit. And this is our first act of transformation because it goes against so much of what we were before when we wanted to, to just be ourselves and do our thing. Instead, we come to Him and say, God, I'm yours. You see, He calls us this, this first act of transformation it's supposed to be our spiritual act of worship. But if you look at the into to the older scriptures, into the older translations, it says it is our spiritual service of worship. So being a living sacrifice means that you are given the gift of serving to the Lord. According to scripture, love, it leads to obedience. Obedience leads to service. And service leads to worship. The only gift that God wants from us is to be worshipped and to have our heart. And that happens as we obey Him and give ourselves in service to Him and those around us. You see, so often we get this, this view of worship and worship's what we do when we sing a song on Sunday morning. It can be. But that's such a small sliver of what worship is. Worship is the listening and doing. Did you hear that, kids? Listening and doing. I love to be worshipped by my kids when they listen and do what I tell them. Amen? Isn't that the greatest gift that they can give us? That's what God is after. Listening, being obedient, laying down our lives as our spiritual and living sacrifice to the Lord. What He wants is us. So transformation number one, our bodies become a living sacrifice. Transformation number two is that we have a renewed mind. You see, once we have laid our life down, once we give up our rights, our wants, our desires, and that will transform the way that we live, the next thing God wants is our minds. This is from the scripture from this morning. He says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, a mind that is transformed and renewed by God is a beautiful and very dangerous thing. 
Would you agree or disagree with that? Because before we gave our lives to God, our minds are controlled by things like fear and things like doubt and things like worry. Anyone else have trouble with the fear and worry and doubt controlling your thoughts and your minds? I guess I'm the only one. And our minds and our thoughts are controlled by what other people will think. Anyone else have a mind that's controlled by what other people think? But when you are become a Christian, when you become and you enter into this new covenant, we get to rid ourselves of the fear and worry that's in our head. 